The Cincinnati Bengals are about to cut their roster down to 53 players. Let's talk about some of the toughest roster cuts as we project who the Bengals will keep on their 53. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bengals fans and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. I'm your host Jake Lesko. He's your host James Rapine. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network and you can find the show on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcasts. And if you want to join the first listen club, you want to join that everyday club, make sure you're subscribed to the show. That'll make it really easy to find when we upload our content every day like today when we're a little bit earlier than normal because of the various timelines around the cut down to 53. Cut down to 53, a bittersweet day for any football team. As it's, it's a big day where a lot of guys are going to potentially lose jobs. Some other guys are going to eventually land on practice squads and be claimed. And we're going to do our best, based on everything we've seen and heard in this episode, to project what we think the Bengals will do as they formulate their 53-man roster. Today's episode of Lockdown Bengals brought to you by Game Time. Create an account and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL. For $20 off your first purchase, last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, James, let's dive in. 53-man roster projections. A lot of these, I think, pretty straightforward. A lot of these questions, some of the similar questions that we've talked about in the last couple of weeks when we've taken a look at what this roster might shake out as, but at least some have answered themselves. Quarterback (laughs) being one example where... Unless there is a waiver move coming or a veteran that they sign, which I don't know that they'll do before week one, Joe Burrow and Jake Browning is likely the two-man room here. And then we'll see who lands on the practice squad. Yeah, I I agree. I think Jake Browning certainly has the edge in the building. And and he really, when you look back at the preseason, outplayed Trevor Simeon for all but a drive and a half at the end of his stint against the Packers. Like he was like 10 of 13 at one point against the Packers. And if his night just ends right there, then he outplays him uh, against green Bay outplays him at the end of week two, certainly with the Atlanta game. And then this past week as well. So Browning makes sense. That said, you, you kind of hinted at it. I, I certainly hope that they're looking around because it's one thing to beat out Trevor Simeon. It's another to keep the team afloat if Burrow misses a month. I get it. There's not going to be a guy you get where he's going to be Joe Burrow or close to Joe Burrow for an extended period of time, but can he keep whoever this quarterback is, whether it's Browning or someone else, I need the Bengals back up to keep the team afloat. So hopefully they're looking around. I know we've gotten some tweets about Will Greer. Who knows? If he gets cut, I think the Bengals could be in. I don't know if they'll trade for him. It's really hard to make trades. Um, and, and that doesn't mean that the Bengals aren't in and negotiating on various deals. I'm sure they're sniffing around the league, as is the 31 other teams. So we'll see. But, yeah, I think uh, I think quarterback-wise it would be nice, even though you're right, Jake Browning will likely be the backup week one if they got someone else in the building. And, and with the, the beauty of the practice squad and elevations, you could make that work. If you're awarded one of these quarterbacks and claim one of these quarterbacks, well, you just – Move on from Jake Browning. He probably clears waivers. You add him to your practice squad, and he could still be Burrow's backup week one. So there's a path to it. But for the, for the sake of this projection, I think Browning is the 53 uh, is on the 53 man roster for sure. It's going to be one of the more interesting decisions they have to make around cut down days. Whether they do bring in a veteran, whether they do bring in another player to be that backup. PJ Walker released a, another name that's been discussed. Uh, interesting by some some fans by some people on my twitter mentions that that's another would you be interested are are you interested i I don't know i i am not familiar enough with what's happened in pj walker's career recently to to make a an educated assessment there can he run and throw go balls yeah i don't know honestly like that's kind of what i'm what i'm in on as a backup quarter because you can you can trick your way into a couple of wins over a month span doing that with this team, I think. 
regardless, it'll be interesting. I, 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 I know that's short sighted, by the way, but I just yeah. You know, well, it's kind of how I look at it. the nature of backup quarterback, right? Game manager, somebody who can take advantage of the weapon, somebody who can make some plays happen for himself. I think that's one of the things that they've actually been impressed with with Jake Browning's development over the course of this preseason as he's gotten more reps. But could you see that at a higher level with more consistency, with more experience? Sure. I think the difficult part, as we've seen with Trevor Simeon, perhaps, is this offense just – you hear about quarterback-friendly offenses. This is an offense made for Joe Burrow's brain and Joe Burrow's eyes and the way Joe Burrow can execute an offense. And so it's not necessarily the easiest one for someone to come off the street and step into on short notice. But let's move off quarterback, James. Wide receiver, the next most straightforward unit on the offense to me, where I still have seven guys here. So maybe maybe it's not as straightforward to you if, if you think that this is the year they move on from Stanley Morgan Jr. I still have Stanley Morgan Jr. on the roster, along with the starters, Chase Higgins Boyd, the backups, Trent Irwin, Charlie Jones, Andre Yosevash. Agreed. No real debate here. I'll just talk about Stanley Morgan for a second. The other six guys are solid locks. Pretty simple. You need a special teams ace. Darren Simmons would probably riot (laughs) and be really upset if you let go of Stanley Morgan Jr. Makes a lot of sense to me. I think he will be on this roster and active for week one. Had a great preseason again. It's kind of what you're accustomed to. Stanley Morgan Jr. making plays on special teams. Mm -hmm. Tyson Anderson, the special teams ace in waiting, but while he'll be part of those units this year, this isn't the year that he takes over all of those Stanley Morgan responsibilities. That's a tough job Darren Simmons has, man. Figuring out who's going to fill these spots, these, these fringe roster guys who need to be game day actives, who can do enough on offense, but can play on your first team special teams. Mm -hmm. That that's a challenging position every year as he has to remake those special teams units. Yeah, it is. And and so that's why I, I think Stanley Morgan sticks around. And overall, I, I think the wide receiver group, there's no real surprises, no true surprises there. I, you know, there was a slight concern. I was wondering about Charlie Jones' shoulder, but I think he's shown enough that, that he'll start the season and be fine and be able to play through it. So uh, we'll see there. Let's go to the one, and, and we'll see how much time, if we can finish this position. Let's go to running back. Running back's tough because Joe Mixon locked in, obviously. Chase Brown locked in, fifth rounder. We know he's making the team. I think at this point, Chris Evans locked in, making the team, valuable piece. He's one of the risers throughout camp in the preseason, showing he can run between the tackles. I think showing pretty well as a pass protector. We know what he can do as a receiver out of the backfield. And so does Travion Williams make the team? Still dealing with the ankle injury. I think it could potentially bleed into week one. I'm not sure if they know yet if that's going to be the case. We talked about it. He's a vested veteran. We we talked about it on uh, on Monday show or Sunday, however you want to phrase it. So that's the one that I have up in the air. And I actually have him on the outside looking in at this point, Jake. And I've been four running backs for multiple weeks, but he's not subject to waivers. And I think they would say, look, we're going to probably get you back onto the roster at some point but let's let that ankle heal and let's get you on the practice squad. The challenging thing is that you, you miss a day. And if he's practicing, you, you lose a day of that. If they want him to be up for week one, if they think he will be back for week one, and that's the question, right? If he's not going to be ready for week one, then maybe this decision makes itself as they want a roster spot somewhere else. But to me, running back tight end are linked. Four tight ends, four running backs. Tanner Hudson has been very impressive. We talked about Mitch Wilcox in his first game and his return blocked really well, at least according to PFF. That's a guy they trust. Mm-hmm. We think that they think Williams is their best option as a passing down back, even though Chris Evans has taken a step and regained some trust, even though Chase Brown has shown growth over the preseason. This is, this is one of the harder ones. And, one of the things that we've talked about is where do they find a vested veteran that maybe they don't need right away who they can, they feel like they can cut and bring back. Is there an IR move coming? These are all things that are very hard, but if, if Williams is a cut, it wouldn't be the most surprising thing in the world. It's something that we talked about 
throughout camp, really? Do they cut one of these running backs and try to bring them back to the practice squad, Williams or Evans, with Williams being injured? You could see that happening. I just feel like we're operating here at a place of incomplete information. But Mm -hmm. let's finish up this conversation and talk about those tight ends, which I think are linked to this conversation. Coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful, whether it's tickets to a Bengals game or the theater or to a Taylor Swift concert. It doesn't matter if it's music, comedy, sports, you name it. It should be a simple process where you're able to get deals even up to the last minute. Well, that's what Game Time is. They have killer deals up to the very last second. So you don't have to stress about getting tickets super early, way in advance. No, no, no. You can still make the trip to Cleveland and watch the Bengals play the Browns with game time. Forget planning months in advance. Get in on the action today with game time. And they give you images of the seats before you buy, so you know the exact view you're going to have. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. It's really simple to use, and the tickets are sent directly to your phone. So let's say you're at the tailgate, and you didn't plan on going to the game this year. Maybe it's later this year you're at Paycor, and you decide, you know what, I'm going to go. Well, use Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed, and use promo code locked on NFL for $20 off. James, let's keep talking about the offense yeah. here. We've got a couple more positions to get to. Do you think that I'm on the right track here? Because I feel like sometimes we associate, well, if they keep four running backs, they can't keep four tight ends. And it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes it is somewhere else that we don't anticipate. Do you think that that's the case this year where it is? three tight ends, three running backs, four tight ends, four running backs. I would be surprised if they were able to pull that off. Now, the path to that would be eight offensive linemen, which I'd be surprised again, or one quarterback. I, I'm just – I'm flo- I'm floating that out there. Now, initially, I think they would still keep two. I don't think they're that edgy, but I could totally see that initially if they're like, you know what, let's just see what's out there. And we'll see if both of these guys pass through and, and which one we can resign to the practice squad. But I, I think it does come down to where there's either a fourth tight end or a fourth running back. And it probably comes down to three guys, Travion Williams, Mitch Wilcox, mm-hmm. and obviously Tanner Hudson. Drew Sample, I know a lot of people discussing him. And maybe he's one of those vested veterans you mentioned. Maybe he does get cut initially so they can clear a spot for someone who's going on injured reserve or protect one of these young guys. And they bring him back on Thursday. Drew sample is a lock to be on the team week one. And if he's not, uh, I'll eat crow on the pod. It's not going to happen. He'll be on the team barring something. I don't even know what, because even if he gets injured, he would still be on the team. Uh, So that said, I have both tight ends making it. I think Tanner Hudson has made this impossible. He's been so good. I think he's almost like a plug-and-play Irv Smith Jr. replacement if you needed one at some point. And given Smith's injury history, that would be nice to have in this offense from a pass-catching standpoint. Uh, it mostly is what I'm talking about replacement-wise. And then Wilcox is kind of like a, a better pass-catcher version of Drew Sample, where he gives you a little more in the passing game if you need it. He can be that blocker, that special teams guy if you need it. And so all four tight ends make sense. So I I have them keeping four. Yeah, the challenge with keeping four tight ends is sort of the same challenge as keeping four running backs. If they wanted to do that, you don't have you don't have those guys on the field, and it's it's hard to use a roster spot on a guy where you know they're typically one tight end on the field. They're ninety nine percent of the time one running back on the field. So keeping an extra guy at those positions sometimes feels a little bit awkward, but hey, we just saw them last year when we didn't think they would go four running backs, end up with four running backs. And so I I think that Hudson's been very impressive the entire preseason from our early training camp episodes to the preseason games. We've been talking about Hudson. Mm -hmm. Easy to imagine him making the roster. I do think injuries at other positions will potentially muddy things here. We don't know the status of Deontay Smith. 
We don't mm-hmm. know the status of Joseph Osai. Both of those are guys that are on my 53-man projection right now. But if they need an IR stint, then the Bengals are in a, a tricky position where, okay, maybe this is where you find those vested veterans to cut temporarily and say, hey, we got to let you go for a day so we can get some of these guys to IR and then we'll bring you back. And, and then they don't want to expose some guys to waivers. That's where you could see the Drew Sample, Travion Williams moves happen and, mm-hmm. and then Hudson's back. But then you also have to consider that they need to replace those guys on the depth chart, Deontay Smith and Joseph Osai. That could be the path for Hakeem Adeniji, Raymond Johnson the third. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think the two biggest questions, can you find a spot for Hudson? Can you find a spot for Raymond Johnson the third? And let's start again, going back to Hudson. I, and I do think it's a Hudson Williams conversation. Williams might be the one active week one. Mm-hmm. There's a path for that. And Hudson isn't, but to me, who's more likely to get claimed today. I think back, I talked to a coach last year after they claimed Devin Asiasi. And he was like, look, it's hard to find tight ends. It, it, it's hard to find tight ends this time of year. They had dealt with, uh, some injuries, I think Sample was was working through some things, and it, it, they obviously were in on OJ Howard for a second until they were awarded Devin Asiasi. I think they'll look at it that way and say, "Let's go heavier here at tight end because it's harder to replace that guy than if they somehow did lose Travion. He doesn't have to go through waivers anyways. I don't think that would happen. They could make a deal with him, handshake deal at the table as they cut him, and, and so that's." That's where I lean, but we still got to get to the offensive line, man. This is where it gets real Mm -hmm. interesting. Well, going to be, yeah, tight end, just to wrap it up. Hudson as a practice squatter wouldn't be shocking, just to be clear. But right now, I I think we we both think he's done enough to make the team. Devin Asiasi. I think Wilcox is more likely to to sneak onto the practice squad, but they value him. Like, I think he's active week one. So, yeah, I don't think that's a risk they're super comfortable with, just given their familiarity there. Could also see Devin Asiasi, if he clears waivers this year, which he didn't last year, get to the practice squad. Yep. Offensive line, like you said, starting five, easy locks, mm-hmm. Orlando Brown, Cordell Volson, Ted Karras, Alex Kappa, Jonah Williams. Still think LC is on the pup to start the year, so he will yep. not take a roster spot. Jackson Carmen. Has not had a great preseason. Has not capitalized on his opportunity. Played a lot in that third preseason game. Didn't play particularly well in that third preseason game. Still think he's on the team. Unless they find a trade. Hmm. And time is running out as we record this at 1236 Eastern time. For them to find a trade partner. Some of those teams that are looking for the developmental offensive linemen have made those trades. Outside of that, Max Sharping to me, interior offensive line backup. I still think Cody Ford, despite the concussion, is the other guy in the interior. And I think Deontay Smith is a leader in the clubhouse for the other backup tackle. And they go with nine. But that injury caveat's there. Yep. And and that's where Hakeem Adenergy could make the team as a versatile tackle and interior backup as well. Yep. I, I think that's where they could almost sneakily keep keep 10 is you, you move on from one of these vested veterans just to get Deontay Smith. If he needs to go to IR, it sounds like it's a shoulder left shoulder. He was holding his arm, but left shoulder injury. We'll see. Hopefully it's not serious, but offensive linemen need their shoulders to, to, to do what they do. So yeah, we'll see. That's the big question mark. I agree with you on Carmen. I think he's making the team they're higher on Cody Ford than I think some of the, the people that have, have broken down film, this preseason are. And so I think he makes the team and Max Sharping to me has bypassed Trey Hill, who's probably going to clear waivers. Maybe not. It's an offensive star of league. You could see it, but I could see him clearing waivers and being backed on the practice squad. I, I kind of expect him to clear waivers. He could be one of the waiver guys along with Nate Gilliam, Ben Brown. It seems like they really like Jackson Kirkland, giving him some run and tackle. Wouldn't be surprised to see him on the practice squad. The other guys on the offense that I think they'd really like to get onto the practice squad. Uh, if they can get Trent Taylor back for another year to have that insurance for Charlie Jones, I think they would like that. Uh, the most impressive receiver to me this preseason that isn't on our projection, easily Shedrick Jackson. think they would love to have him on the practice squad. He's shown quite yes. a bit throughout camp in the preseason. And uh, it wouldn't also shock me to see Kwame Lasseter 
take another run. Again, if they if, if Trent Taylor doesn't work out for whatever reason, something like that, where they want a receiver, a uh, punt returner. On the Give me all of them. As well. Give me all of them, baby. You know me. I'm wide receiver. Give me them all. All of those guys you just named. Wouldn't honestly shock me to, to see it work out that way, to be honest. I I think I think Lassiter and Taylor is a little redundant. Yeah. And I wonder there if that's the decision between mm-hmm. those two. But yeah. other than that, I agree with you. Shedrick Jackson, sign me up if you can. Big time. Let's talk defense, James. It's a whole defense. side of the ball that we haven't gotten to yet. But some of these are, I think, more cut and dried. We'll talk defense for the 53 coming up next. Let's start with the easy ones, Jake, and then we'll get to the tough ones. Linebacker has not changed. <laughs> it has not changed. Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, Akeem Davis, Gaither, Joe Bocci, Marcus Bailey. Those are the five. Do you have any reservations or anything that is different than than the five that we had a month ago? No. There Wilson and Pratt starting. Davis Gaither, easily the first linebacker off the bench. Bailey Bocci hardly played in preseason game number three. It tells you everything you need to know about their plans there. All right, let's go to safety, where I think it's obvious Michael Thomas is going to be on the outside looking in. They're going to bring him back on the practice squad. He passed the torch to Tyson Anderson. Tyson Anderson had a heck of a preseason. Jordan Battle is obviously a third rounder. He's getting more more and more acclimated to life in the NFL, and we know the two starters. They keep four safeties. Any argument there? Nope. All right, that's easy. Let's knock the specialists out of the way. Then we're going to get to corners and defensive line because those are going to take up much more time. Evan McPherson, Cal Adamitis, Brad Robbins. Robbins beats out Drew Chrisman. We knew that already. What I think is interesting is if do they try to keep Chrisman around on the practice squad again and use a spot, or is this it for him in Cincinnati? I think that's an interesting – I don't even know if it's a dilemma, but it's a discussion. It's a question. I, when I've tried to fill out the practice squad, haven't been able to fill all the spots, but that mm-hmm. is prior to wow. some of these, some of these decisions being made. So like if Sidney Jones wants to go to the practice squad, that's a guy that I don't have on the practice squad projection right now that I would add. If Hakeem Adenergy needs to go to the practice squad and Deontay Smith's ready to go and they can get him there. That's another one that, that I would put on the practice squad. So, um, Do I saw a couple open spots, uh, He's not on the list yet because he was still on the bubble last time I updated uh, my practice squad listing. So I do have QB. I do have QB as a placeholder on the practice squad, though. I expect there to be a practice squad quarterback. I really think the more like that might be Jake Browning in four weeks, and they find a guy maybe this week or next week, and they find a guy like a Will Greer. Like I, I could totally see them being like, let's claim him. And then we just move Browning to the practice squad and he's up for the first few games and we'll go from there. You never know. Yeah, The, the one thing to watch on waiver claims this year, and then we'll get to the corners and the defensive line is last year, they won more waiver claims than they expected to. I think yes, ended up yes. costing them more than they expected to uh, have from a salary cap allocation perspective. I don't think that they were like upset about that necessarily, but there's one big financial question that we oh. still haven't talked about this week that uh, or two looming over this team this year. Yeah, how much are they going to, to pay us to be the – no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, right. Joe Burrow, for those wondering. <laughs> um, all three guys played, though. That's yeah. the part that – like their roster got so much better adding Asi Asi and Tufele and, and Sharping. And so let's uh, use that to talk about Jay Tufele. The defensive line room, it is, man, it is tight now. It is very tight. They already moved on from Terrell Basham before the third preseason game. They said, you know what, let's give you a chance to go elsewhere. We know you're not going to make the team here. I actually like that they gave them that professional courtesy. Who do you have? Let's just combine them. Defensive line overall, how many do you have and who do you have? I've got 10. I've got the five edge Same. guys, Sample, Murphy, Hendrickson, Osai Hubbard, the very difficult cut, Raymond Johnson, the third. I went back and actually looked at guys who had the top PFF pass rushing grade in the preseason in the last couple of years and how they played in the regular season. Almost all of those guys have average or better seasons as pass rushers after leading PFF's grading in the preseason as pass rushers. So Raymond Johnson, the third, even if he's not this – excellent pass rusher who can drop into coverage and be the backup Joseph Osai role could at least be an average player for you based on those trends. 
not that it always holds up that way and PFF grades, you know, take them with a grain of salt or whatever, but that is the most, one of the most difficult cuts on the team based on how he's played in the preseason. If it was strictly on how they played in the preseason, he would be on the team. He's been great, guys. So at edge, very yeah. easy. On the interior, four guys, very easy. To Tefele, a little bit more difficult. He has not been great since preseason game number one, but you can see why they like him. You've heard Luana Rumo praise him at a high level. Mm -hmm. So still not ready to, to say they're going to cut J2 Fele, but this is one that wouldn't shock me, James. If they yep. decided they wanted to go four and four and keep nine on the offensive line and, and said to Fele, you know, we can live without you if we don't get you back. That is one that honestly wouldn't shock me and might be surprising to some others. Especially because you could have Dominique Davis in your back pocket. And, and so let, let's say you move on from Jay to Fele and Davis. You're like, all right, we'll keep one of the two. Maybe we keep both, but we'll keep one of the two. I get the logic. I have the same as you. I have 10. I have two Fele still making it. Maybe it's that, that first week against the Packers stuck in my brain or the fact that Luana Rumo just says that guy's a gamer. He's going to matter for us. All of those things. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe he's going to matter for us in a practice squad capacity if you're Luana Rumo. But man, it, it's tough with Raymond Johnson the third because he's been really good. He showed that versatility to be able to move inside, to make plays on the inside as well. And the the dark horse here, or, or the thing that could impact it all, and clear the decks for both guys to make it long term. And, and by long term, I mean over the next few days as they do the roster gymnastics. Is if Joseph Osai, if that ankle injury is a four week injury, if it's four to six weeks, he's going on IR. Just is, it would make sense. It would clear the spot, and you would be able to cut one of those vested veterans, bring him back in a day, and put Osai on injured reserve. So this is a big dilemma, but it might not be a dilemma depending on on the health of Joseph Osai. Yeah, that's the question, right? That That's a question that we do not have the answer to. Yeah, I know. It sucks. It sucks that we don't. Hopefully he's okay. It also sucks that he needed the reps. And it's Osai and Smith both – yeah, needed the rest. Osai and Smith both <laughs> uh, both sustaining injuries in the final preseason game. That's like the nightmare Stink. stuff for some guys that are first guys off the bench at their respective positions. That's why I just – I was out on playing anybody. I was just yeah. out. I'm, I wouldn't have even had those guys fly there. I would have been like, starters, take your tails home. And that's Starter, starters and first guys off the bench at most positions, especially on FedEx field. And I, I watched the replay of Osai's injury because I didn't actually catch it live. And his foot gets caught in the turf. It's, it's normal yeah. FedEx field stuff. It honestly, I, I just won't speculate. I won't speculate about the injury. I have an idea about what it might be. Hopefully it's not what I think it is. It could just be a normal ankle sprain, but ankle sprain is a broad category. Let's get to these corners, James. Yep. I think this is pretty straightforward at this point, too. Cindy Jones missing too much of the preseason to really have much of a claim. DJ Ivy doing too much with his opportunity, impressing from the offseason program to training camp to tra to preseason games. So, Chidobe Awuzie, Mike Hilton, Cam Taylor Britt, DJ Turner, Jalen Davis to back up Mike Hilton, DJ Ivy, the other outside corner. The only thing that could complicate this is yeah. if DJ Turner needs a trip to the IR for his hamstring which we also don't really know a ton about. He's dealing with dealing with an injury of his own. Expecting Cheeto to be ready, though, the trajectory he's been on, and don't really know what's going on with Sidney Jones. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been out for a bit. I think I think Turner's okay, but we'll see. I, I think he's gonna be fine, but I agree with you. It's that's the really the only path. And DJ Ivy made this pretty Pretty clear, pretty easy, especially with Jones being out and injured. And I love the, the two signings, Basham and Jones pre-draft, because it, it kind of took the pressure off of having to add a pass rusher or a corner. But the way the board felt, that's the, the first two positions the Bengals addressed in the draft. So guess what? Those guys went from, man, nice depth pieces potentially to roster bubble guys. And the addition of DJ Ivy really cemented Sidney Jones's fate. So, yeah, I think he's – Potential practice squatter, but honestly, in this league, corners, I think someone will, will try to sign him. Yeah, and then it could just be Alan George, who yep. reprises his role in the practice squad, was on the bubble for part of camp. DJ Ivy, I think, clearly 
wins yeah. that competition for that last spot. So our, our competition winners, Jake Browning, DJ Ivy, Max Sharping. Th- those are the three biggest competition winners out of the camp. Brad Robbins. Yep. Brad Robbins. Th- those are the biggest ones. The toughest cuts to me. Chris Evans. Be- Chris, Chris Evans, Evans. Too, too. He deserves, he deserves some flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. He, he had a re- very nice preseason. Um, toughest cuts to me would be at either tight end, offensive line, running back, edge. Yeah. We talked about yeah. some of those guys. And we talked about a bunch of vested veterans that they could use to, to help maneuver around the 53-man cutoff and then the subsequent requirement to IR players. Honestly, don't know why the NFL doesn't change that. Let teams just put guys on IR as part of the cut down to 53 when they need to instead of this whole gymnastics routine that they do. But that is a rule in the NFL. If they need to go on IR to return, they have to make the initial 53. So we'll see if the Bengals have any of those moves. Any closing thoughts, James? I think they're going to make some moves. I do. And, and so that's why part of the reason why we go early today, as we record, we're about 27 hours away from cut down day. So yeah, I think that there'll be a, a new face or two in the building. Uh, what Wednesday would be the day where we would find out if something were to happen. So uh, we'll see there, but uh, yeah, exciting, exciting times, Jake. Next episode will be after the initial cut down to 53. And obviously for all these players that do get cut or waived, hopefully they land on their feet. Hopefully they find continued work, but part of the job here is trying to figure out who will be part of the 2023 Cincinnati Bengals. So that was this exercise until next time, Bengals fans. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Who day and have a good one.